the middle of the week. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. So today we announced that uh, President Biden will travel next week to the United Kingdom and Ireland. He will head first uh, to travel to uh, Belfast. That'll be his first stop, where he will mark the tremendous progress since the signing of the Belfast Good Friday Agreement 25 years ago and underscore the readiness of the United States to support Northern Ireland's vast economic potential to the benefit of all communities. Next, the President will travel to Ireland where he will discuss our close cooperation on the full range of shared global challenges. He will also hold various engagements including Dublin, County Louth, and County Mayo, and, and, and celebrate the deep historic ties that link our countries and people. We will have more information on this trip uh, to announce soon. And uh, finally, I want to wish a happy Passover to Jewish Americans in communities across the country who will gather around the Seder table tonight. As the President said today, Passover is more than just recounting of the past. It reminds us of our moral obligation of state clear clearly and forcefully that anti-Semitism must stop. Passover is also a story of redemption, resilience, and unity. A story of people coming together with a shared faith and a shared people for a better tomorrow. With that, Zeke, you want to kick us off? Um, thank you. Um, first off, I'm, I'm uh, in Washington there about Passover. President Mazzotta this morning referenced his anti-Semitism strategy. He hasn't, uh, Doug Emhoff, uh, some gentleman has talked about it as well. When does he actually want to see that strategy released? So don't have a timeline for the strategy on when uh, we would want to see that moving forward, but clearly the president has been very vocal on the anti-Semitism that we have seen across the country, the violence. Uh, and so, of course, we're going to continue to speak to that, as I just did just now, as the president did uh, clearly in his uh, statement. Just don't have any update on the particular, on the specific strategy. Um, we've seen additional uh, devastating uh, tornadoes and storms uh, over the last several days. Um, does the president plan to travel to Arkansas? Are there additional calls you can read out? And what's the status of federal support for these hard hit communities? So don't have a, an update on any travel that the president's going to be uh, making. I can say federal teams continue to work closely with state and local officials to get impacted communities the support they need. Uh, President Biden has been in touch with leaders across uh, the, uh, the impacted states. Uh, we've got hundreds of FEMA personnel on the ground. Uh, that includes over 400 FEMA personnel in Mississippi, over 120 FEMA personnel in Arkansas. Uh, they're surveying damage, assisting with recovery efforts and more. In Mississippi, for example, uh, FEMA has distrib distributed more than $2 million in individual assistance, and we're committed to supporting impacted communities as long uh, as it takes. Of course, this is something that, uh, unfortunately, the President has had to deal with uh, when it comes to these type of extreme uh, weather uh, during his first two years of administration, so he takes this very seriously. I just don't have anything to share uh, on travel, but clearly FEMA's on the ground doing, and, and other government officials, uh, entities 
are on the ground doing everything that we can to support uh, the, uh, the the citizens of these of these two states in particular. And just uh, one last one on a different topic: uh, the uh, attacks on the uh, on the prosecutor in, in New York, on the judge in New York in the in, in the Trump case, uh, some directed by the president. Uh, there's criticism from the Mexican president uh, of. Uh, uh, of, of that prosecution. Uh, I understand you yesterday was well covered that you don't want to talk about the specifics of the case, but can you speak to criticism or attacks on the judiciary, uh, on the judicial system and the nation's you know, system of governance and, and, uh, and jurisprudence? Yeah, I totally understand the question. And I'll just so that I'm on the record, per usual, I'm not going to speak to uh, an ongoing uh, case. Uh, and I've been, we've been very consistent and, and very uh, uh, prudent about that. So I'm going to continue to, to leave that there. But more broadly, of course, and you've heard me say this, you've heard the president say this many times, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we condemn any type of uh, attack on any judge uh, that uh, any uh, or our judicial system uh, that uh, we have seen over the last two years in particular as the president has been in office but again I'm not going to speak to the case uh, specifically but that is something that uh, we definitely condemn just one more on that topic can you just confirm or, or tell us how the president was informed of the charges against his predecessor was he briefed on this do you mean? Uh, oh, do you mean yesterday? With yeah. the so look, look, the president um, uh, clearly, and I said the president. I said this yesterday. The president's focus is on the American people. That's going to continue to be his focus. Uh, he, uh, as as he was last week when uh, when the announcement was made uh, of the uh, of uh, of, a, of an indictment, uh, he was of course uh, briefed by by the his senior members of his staff. Uh, just like as we we all found out, you all learned uh, through uh, through uh, reports. Uh, the media reporting, and that's all I have. I don't have anything more to share on that. And on the meeting between uh, House Speaker McCarthy and the Taiwanese president, has the U.S. seen any signs that China could be preparing some kind of response to this meeting? You know, any evidence that they could launch any kind of military drills like they did around Speaker Pelosi? So I'm just going to be very. Uh, I'm just going to repeat what Secretary Blinken said. As you you all heard him moments ago when he did his press avail uh, in uh, in Belfast, Belgium. Um, I'm sorry, pardon me, in, in Brussels it was confusing with the top with the president going to Ireland and the UK. He was very, very clear, and we've been very clear. Um, we have said there is no reason for uh, Beijing to turn this, tra this transit uh, into, uh, into something that is used as a pretext to overreact. Uh, we've been very clear about that. This is something, uh, when you look at this, this, this transit that the, the president of Taiwan is doing, this is something that's been part of uh, a long tradition, a long U.S. Uh, tradition. And so, again, we're, we just do not see, there should not be a reason uh, for uh, the PCR to uh, to overreact here. And just one quick one on, on the trip to Ireland. In the past, the president has taken members of several generations of his family with him when he's made similar trips. Uh, can you discuss, is anybody else going to be coming along? We'll have more to share. don't have anything specific on who, if there are going to be members of his family attending uh, the trip next week, but we'll certainly have more to share as we get closer to the date. Along those lines, is, is he going to retrace his family roots there? Uh, why is it personally important for him to go on this trip? Yeah, just to give you a little bit more. Uh, so, again, we'll have more in the coming days. Uh, look, the president is eager. I actually had a conversation with him this morning about this particular trip. He's eager to visit the United Kingdom and Ireland, uh, two nations whom we have close ties to. Uh, he, as I mentioned, will have a series of engagements, Belfast and Dublin and County Louth and County Mayo. Uh, but as I, I, as, um, you know, as I mentioned, uh, look, He's looking forward to this. The president uh, is going to be highlighting, as you talk about his family, how his family history is part of that larger shared history between U.S. and Ireland. Uh, waves of Irish immigrants helped shape America's spirit of freedom and of our uh, drive for independence, which launched an irrevocable friendship between our two countries. So yes, that part of the trip where it, it connects to his family is going to be incredibly important to him, but also the broader, uh, the broader Irish American community as well as we talk about uh, immigrants as we talk about how this country was created. So he is um, uh, he's in, he is definitely looking forward to this trip. On the debt ceiling, definitely interested if you have any uh, updates to share, conversations uh, that have happened, including on a staff level. But um, more specifically, is the White House open to a short-term increase at this at this time? What I can say is what we've been saying for for months now, for weeks uh, uh, now, which is. 
we believe that the debt ceiling should be dealt with uh, uh, in a way that Congress has done so in a bipartisan way for the last uh, for the last couple of decades, right? If you think about uh, the three times uh, where Democrats uh, came together with Republicans to lift uh, to deal with the debt ceiling, this is how we believe it's their constitutional duty. We do not believe that uh, the full credit and faith and credit of of our nation should be held hostage. We've been very clear on that. Uh, there's no negotiation uh, that we will be having on that particular issue because it is something that Congress needs to deal with. So I don't have anything more uh, to share on that. We are waiting. We're waiting for House con congressional members uh, to put forth uh, a, a budget. The president did that. He showed his values. He showed uh, what how he sees the fiscal responsibility of of uh, of, of the president as we move forward uh, to, and to show and be really transparent to the American people. We're waiting for uh, we're waiting for uh, House members to do the same. House Republican members to do the same. So is the White House open to a short-term increase? I, what I'm saying is we've been very clear that. Congress needs to deal with this issue as they have done in the last administration three times. Can I get um, any sort of reaction from the White House uh, to this liberal judge winning in the Supreme Court election in Wisconsin? Just broadly speaking, does the White House see this as voters casting their ballots in support of abortion access and a sign of things to come heading into 2024? So, yeah, so more broadly, time and time again, the American people have shown their resolute support for reproductive freedom in our democracy. And last night was no different. We saw that clearly after uh, the midterm elections at every opportunity following the Supreme Court's decision uh, to overturn Roe v. Wade from Kansas, ballot initiative in August, uh, and to the clean sweep of five abortion ballot initiatives I just mentioned in November. Two, Virgi two Virginia's uh, special election in, in January, two last, night, two last night's elections in Wisconsin. The message from voters has been clear. Americans want the freedom to make uh, reproductive health care decisions without government interference. They have been very clear about that. Yet, though, you see Republican elected officials are more committed than ever uh, to attack those fundamental freedoms uh, that Americans should have. And look, you have Republican officials in Florida, in North Carolina, in Nebraska, are attempting to pass extreme abortion bills. You have in Congress, where we've seen three national abortion bills come out this year uh, on, on, uh, from, from Republicans in Congress. And so, look, we believe that uh, it is important for Americans to have their freedom, including their right uh, to make a decision, uh, women to have their right to make a decision on their own, on their own health care. And so the, this, is an, this is an administration uh, that's going to continue to, to fight, for, uh, fight for those freedoms. Just one more on a different race, the um, mayoral race in Chicago. Does the White House feel like there are any lessons for Democrats based on the results of that race, uh, particularly in terms of how the party should talk about and discuss issues related to crime? So I'm not going to, I'm limited in what I can, what I can say as it looks uh, forward to uh, 24 or any uh, future elections. What I can speak to, and as we've done many times here, is speak to the president's uh, record. Uh, he believes that we should fund the police and give law enforcement the resources they need for effective accountability and community uh, policing. That is something that uh, the president has uh, been very vocal about and has taken action on. Uh, that's why he supported, again, the COPS program, and he signed the American Rescue Plan, which had $350 million, billion dollars to local governments to keep cops on the beat. So the president uh, has been very clear about this uh, and uh, in his support in making sure that American uh, families and communities are protected and feel safe and he's going to continue to do that work, uh, but not going to dive into any specifics on uh, how politically to move forward, especially as we get into 2024. Uh, yeah. On that, though, I, I hear you being a little more laudatory in terms of the results in Wisconsin versus in Mr. Johnson's win last night. Oh, I, I, well, I was asked specifically about crime and how we move forward on crime. What does he make of Mr. Johnson's win? Oh, Is there yeah, yeah. Talk? Well, Okay, that was not the question that I got asked. I got specifically asked about crime. Look, I can say this. Uh, the president is, uh, sends his congratulations uh, to Chicago mayor-elect Brandon Johnson. The president looks forward to working with him uh, to deliver for the people of Chicago. Uh, and uh, look, you know, what I can say is this. Uh, the mayor-elect Johnson is a former teacher and a union organizer. His, vic his victory is a testament to the strength and, and organizing power of our educators. And that's something that we saw uh, yesterday. Um, and so I'll just leave it there. But now, regarding yesterday and how the president learned about all this, are you telling us that he 
only learn about this through staffing, or did he consume any of this as a news consumer? I mean, I can tell you this. Here's what I can tell you, is that the president uh, was focused on working on behalf of the American people. He met with his senior advisors, his senior team uh, yesterday, uh, and uh, in the Oval Office. That's that's what he was continuing to do throughout the day. Uh, and uh, and that's kind of how he's moving forward. That's what he's going to pay attention to. And you saw that. You saw that in Minnesota uh, this week, his focus on, uh, on uh, Chips and Science Act, how we're bringing manufacturing back uh, to, uh, to this country, uh, creating more than 800,000 jobs. That is something that the president is going to continue to focus. How do we build an economy that leaves no one behind? So that's what the president is doing. I've been very clear about that. That's going to be his focus. He's not focused uh, on, on this indictment. That's not what our focus is on. That's something that is an ongoing case. Uh, we, we will let others deal with that. Our focus is what the president was elected to do, is make sure that we deliver for the American public. And just real quick, not a question, but a request followed up by Mary's uh, question about who's going with the president from the Biden family and the wider clan. Um, can we get clarification at some point in the process of that, of exactly how this is paid for? There have been questions in the past about when he travels with family or when people are staying here about how that is handled. Yeah, um, and we're not doing it any differently than other families who have uh, have uh, been uh, in the White House, who have held this uh, held office, uh, and uh, and so you know we'll share more when we have more to share on who's going to be traveling with him. I don't have that information, so don't want to get ahead uh, of that. Uh, but of course, the president uh, is a president that follows the law, <laughs> and uh, does uh, does does uh, these types of things in the appropriate fashion, appropriate way. Okay. Hey, Grant. Um, you mentioned the president traveled to Minnesota this week. He had a meeting yesterday on artificial intelligence. Uh, you said he's looking forward to this trip to Ireland as well. In any other news environment, these might be stories that are really driving uh, both national and local headlines. But as the questions that you got yesterday indicate, there's one other story really dominating the news right now. Can you talk about the White House's strategy to make sure the president's message is getting through to the American people? and? The, president, the former president's legal troubles are likely not to go away at all this year. Is there concern that this will take away from the president's ability to communicate uh, that message this year? Well, we've been very clear. I Here at the podium yesterday, as you just mentioned, and, and today, we've been very clear what our focus is on. I actually got questions on AI, I have a few questions on AI yesterday that we were able to answer and speak to uh, from the podium. Look, our focus is going to continue to be the American people. Uh, what you all cover is up to, to all of you, but we're going to do our best uh, to stay the course, uh, to talk about the issues that matter, right? We think about the economy. Americans really care about the economy. They want to hear how the president is going to uh, lower, continue to lower costs for them, and that's what we're going to continue to talk about. Uh, and so that doesn't change anything. We talked about AI. We went to Minnesota to talk about Chips and Science Act, a p very historic piece of legislation that's going to make a difference in creating good paying jobs and bringing jobs back here to, th to this country. And so, again, things that we're not going to stop to talk about these critically important issues that the American people uh, really want to hear from this president about. So we're just going to stay the course. That's our focus. Thank you. Uh, today marks one week since the Wall Street Journal's Evan Gershkovich was detained by Russia. Secretary Blinken said today he has no doubt that Evan was wrongfully detained. If that's the case, then what's the holdup in making a formal determination? Can you provide more clarity on timing? And he also said in those very remarks that there's a process, right? There's a process that's underway. Uh, and uh, and so you know we have to let the Secretary of, St of State, the Secretary, uh, the Department, uh, do their the Secretary of State Department do their uh, do their job here. Uh, wrongfully detention determinations again are made by them, and the Secretary of State has said that while there is still a formal process that needs to play out, he has no doubt on this one, right? And so I think that says everything that you need uh, to know, uh, their commitment, the priority uh, that that uh, he has uh, to uh, to make sure that uh, uh, that uh, we do everything that we can for Evan and also make sure that we bring Paul Whelan home. Why hasn't President Biden spoken directly to Evan's family? Does he have any plans to meet with them as he did with the families of Brittany Grider and Paul Whelan last fall? 
So look, uh, uh, this case is a priority to the president, as I mentioned yesterday. Uh, I don't have any calls to read out, uh, but uh, I will say that uh, you know that that uh, our our thoughts are with Evans' family, and uh, again, this is a priority for uh, for this uh, for this president. I'll give you a little bit of an update. Yesterday, Ambassador Linda Thomas Greenfield, uh, U.S. Representative of the United Nations, as you all know, spoke with her counterpart uh, today, um, and uh, uh, Ambassador Nebenzia to announce. To, to once again convey the United States gave grave concern about his detention and call for his immediate release. And so, again, the Department, and I said this yesterday, the Department of State continues to uh, to seek uh, counselor access to Evan. Uh, the U.S. Embassy in Moscow has not yet received any approval for counselor access, despite repeated requests. Uh, it will likely take some time, so a couple of days, before we have access. Uh, but again, this is a this is a priority uh, for this president, uh, and uh, and we're going to uh, be steadfast as that. You heard from the Secretary himself uh, say uh, say no doubt in his mind, which I think tells you everything that you need to know. Yeah. Thanks, Karine. Yesterday, uh, your office put out word that the president would not be attending the King's coronation, King Charles, and that the First Lady would be going on behalf of the United States. Uh, can you explain the decision and, and why the president decided that uh, he would not go as head of state on behalf of the United States? So let me just first say and um, the president uh, had about a 25-minute, 30-minute call with the King King uh, King King Charles III, and during which he congratulated the King. I think we put that out uh, last night, his upcoming uh, coronation. And they have a very friendly uh, conversation. They have a, a, a good relationship with the King. He talked about uh, how he enjoyed meeting, uh, visiting uh, the Queen, I should say, back in 2021, he and the First Lady at Windsor. And uh, he hoped to visit again soon. Actually, during that call, the King offered uh, for him to come and do a state a state visit, which, which uh, the president accepted, and uh, and so they will see each other again very soon. And uh, I'll I'll just leave it there. But again, they have a very good relationship. There are many things that they both uh, care about: key shared values, uh, key shared issues that they want to continue to discuss, like climate change. And that conversation will continue, and there will be uh, a visit in the near future. Any uh, sense whether that state visit might happen before? I the don't. End this year? I don't have a timeline at this time. Don't. I can't say if it when it will be. But uh, the president was uh, was appreciative of the offer by the King and looks forward to, to that state visit. A follow to that question, will the President meet with King Charles when he's in the United Kingdom next week or the Prime Minister? Uh, look, I will have more to share on uh, who he's going to be meeting with. I just don't have anything to, to share at this time. And another question quickly. There is a study today that was released by the former Bureau of Labor Statistics statistics director um, showing that Americans are working fewer hours. Is there any concerns that that could add pressure to the job market and the, the Fed's efforts to bring down inflation? Well, I'm not going to talk to the Fed's efforts, uh, their monetary policy, and that's something that we're going to do here. Uh, from here, the, the president has been very clear. We want to give them the space to have their independence, so I'm not going to speak to any actions or potential actions that they might take. Uh, as far as the report, that's the first time I'm hearing about this, so we would need to connect with our economics team here. Uh, but look, the president, we have talked about how uh, the economy, uh, uh, the president's policy when it relates to the economy is working, right? We see uh, we see uh, created jobs. The president, under his economic plan, has created jobs, more than 12 million jobs. Uh, we saw we saw 300,000 jobs that we, create, we created just last month. Uh, we saw we see unemployment that is at a historic low at 3.6 percent, and so we're continuing uh, to see uh, a plan that doesn't leave anybody behind and make sure that we're building an economy from the bottom up, middle out. Uh, as far as that report, I would have to connect with the economic team. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Thank you. Um, on the Wisconsin mm -hmm. election, um, what I, mean, I guess I'm curious about what the president's role is on abortion. The VP is obviously taking kind of a lead and speaking out on it. Um, but what is the president's role? I mean, we haven't really seen him take the issue on the road, for example, uh, meeting with stakeholders. Kind of what what kind of what position is he playing in this? Well, uh, if you look area? at what the administration has done, we've taken historic action. We've taken a historic mm -hmm. action because of the president uh, leading that effort, effort, asking his administration to figure out what other ways that we can we can move forward in uh, to make sure that uh, there is access to reproductive health care. And so the president has taken a whole government approach uh, through his reproductive health care task force. He put that together, right, uh, to protect women's access to reproductive health care, and he 
signs uh, uh, two executive orders to protect a woman's right to travel to receive uh, reproductive health care, strengthen privacy measures, and address uh, discrimination in, in care. This is something that the president has taken very seriously, along with uh, the vice president. But what we're seeing on the other side is Republicans doing everything in their power to make sure that reproductive care is not available to women. Uh, when you see these national bans, when you see these uh, uh, these types of uh, draconian uh, pieces of legislation uh, across the country, uh, that is not something the American people want to see. We know this by just looking at the midterms. I just laid out uh, all of the uh, all of the, the 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 different special elections that we saw uh, and uh, issue based elections that we saw just last year, where the American people spoke very loudly. They want their freedoms. They want the opportunity to decide. Uh, what what they should do, what their decision when it comes to health care. Can I ask yeah, regarding Beijing uh, and the pardon me the meeting between McCarthy and the Taiwan <laughs> president? Has uh, what kind of conversation has the White House been having with Beijing, if any, just to kind of dissuade uh, any potential uh, violence or any type of you know response to the meeting? So our channels of communications are open, and we have had a consistent message that has uh, urged restraint. And in recent days, we have conveyed directly to the Chinese at high levels that escalation is uncalled for. Uh, and, uh, and so we'll continue to keep those channels of conversations open. Okay. Um, on the violence in Jerusalem, uh, what's the White House's response to that? And can you talk about any conversations going on? So on the violence that we saw uh, very recently, um, at least uh, starting with the mosque, we remain extremely concerned by the continuing violence and we urge all sides uh, to avoid further escalation. It is imperative now more than ever that uh, Israelis and Palestinians work together to de-escalate tensions and restore calm. And uh, look, you know, and that's what you've been hearing from this president and from this administration privately and pu publicly for the, over the past six weeks. And uh, and uh, again, we're going to continue to do that, again, privately and publicly. Thank you, Queen. Senor. Hello. <laughs> yes. um, Queen, there, there seems to be a bit of a mix-up. I don't know if messaging mix-up or what was going on uh, about the invitation to LSU, the uh, basketball team from, uh, from um, LSU. Uh, but it seems that their star, Angel Reese, has said that she will not be coming and the team won't be coming. And I think that was even after the White House cleared up this mix-up about whether the runners-up will also be invited. Can, can you clear it up? So everybody? the president and the first lady have expressed um, their, uh, their very much how, how they're looking forward uh, to celebrating the LSU Tigers and also uh, the uh, University of Connecticut, the men's basketball team, the Huskies, right here at the White House, continuing a long tradition that we have had here, celebrating a White House tradition that we have had for celebrating uh, the championship. So we look forward uh, to uh, to welcoming them, uh, LSU Tigers, and also uh, the UConn Huskies, and that is um, that is something that uh, we are are we are again looking forward to to to, to having. As far as you know, they're coming, uh, the Tigers. Well, as you as you know, the president put out uh, put out a statement inviting them. I don't have anything further to share on that. But again, we're looking forward to to uh, to celebrating both teams uh, here: the UConn Huskies and also the LSU Tigers. Thank you. Uh, Twitter labeled National Public Radio as uh, a government influenced uh, entity. Uh, putting NPR the same category as uh, Russia Today or Chinese media. Do you have a comment? Yes, yeah, so social media companies make their own independent decisions about content rules, so I won't comment on Twitter's rules, but what I will say uh, more broadly, I'll say uh, there's no doubt of the independence of NPR's journalists. And uh, has been. If you've ever been on the receiving end of their of their questions, uh, you know this. You know that they have their independence in journalism. NPR journalists work digitally uh, to hold public officials accountable and inform the American people. The hard hitting, independence nature of their coverage speaks uh, speaks for itself. And so I'll leave it there. Go ahead, Michael. Please. About a week ago, uh, the governor of Idaho signed uh, a bill into law authorizing the use of uh, firing squads uh, against uh, death penalty uh, prisoners. Uh, Idaho is the fifth state to legalize uh, the use of firing squads. Do you have a 
comment or does the administration have a position on this matter? So I haven't talked to our team about that particular uh, law. I would have to look into it before I can speak f about it from here. Um, and so I'll just leave it there and we'll get back to you on that particular question. Good. Thank you. I wanted to follow up on your judicial nominee for the trial court in Mississippi. Senator Hyde Smith had said she wouldn't support the nominee. Um, I know you're sticking with uh, your nominee. What do you hope to see Senator Durbin do next? So, um, look, when you think uh, about our nominee, uh, it's a chosen, a, uh, Biden was very proud to choose someone who is uh, uh, deeply qualified, uh, d dedicated to our Constitution, and who received the backing of Republicans and Democrats uh, in Mississippi. Uh, and uh, he is a duly elected district attorney, is clearly trusted by many of, us, uh, many of Senator Hyde uh, Smith's constituents and keep, to keep them safe and ensure that justice is done. So it is unfortunate, uh, sadly, that uh, regardless of being duly consulted, consulted well in advance, and despite Senator Wicker returning a blue slip, uh, Senator Hyde Smith is preventing the people of Mississippi from having a judge in place in a timely fashion to uphold the rule of law uh, for her state. So, uh, you know, furthermore, Senator Hyde Smith never raised these issues before today over the course of months, including when she met with uh, Mr. Uh, Colum several, several weeks ago and never suggested any alternative candidates. And so, look, to your point, we're going to stick uh, with, our, with our, we think, our highly qualified candidate, and, uh, and I'll leave it there. Or does the president still believe that um, blue, ships, blue slips excuse me, should be required for trial court nominees, or would you want the senator to move forward with this one? So look, I, I'll leave it to uh, to Congress, uh, and I'll leave it to uh, the Senate to figure that piece out. But what I can say is, we believe uh, uh, Scott is a thoroughly qualified candidate, uh, and uh, and we're going to leave it there and continue to support his candidacy, his nomination. Thank you. Thank you, Kareem. First on the news of the day, does it bug President Biden when former presidents suck up all the oxygen? What's important to the president is to continue to focus on the American people. That is what's important to the so, president. So he's good to lay low for a couple news cycles. Now. So look, here's the thing. Here's the thing, Peter, and this is what we will speak to. We will speak to the fact that, that this is a president that has been able to uh, get historic pieces of legislation done. When you think about uh, the infrastructure legislation, something that, you know, we heard many, many times during the last administration, Infrastructure Week, Infrastructure Week, guess what this president was able to do? He was able to bring both, both sides together to get this done. And now we have, uh, we're seeing investments in the country, a rebuilding in the country that we haven't seen in 70 years. That's what the president cares about. He cares about the fact that Medicare is now able uh, to, uh, to, to uh, work, you know, talk to big pharma to lower, uh, and to negotiate and lower costs. That's what the president t cares about. What he wants to see is how do we build on his economic policies, his economic plan uh, that we, that has been able to turn this country around from when he first walked in uh, from, uh, from you know what we saw happen in the last administration, basically a mess when it came to the economy, when it came to dealing with COVID. So what the president wants to do is to build on that, and that's his focus. He wakes up every morning thinking about the American people. He goes to bed every night thinking about the American people. Okay. On the Taiwan president visit, if China tries to take over Taiwan, is President Biden still committed to putting U.S. boots on the ground in Taiwan. We've we've answered this question multiple times. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I don't have anything else to share. Okay. And then on the China spycraft, why did President Biden say about the China spycraft in February? We were able to protect sensitive sites against collection. If that's not true. I'm not going to go into a dive into any reporting. Uh, that, that's not something I'm going to do. I'm not going to confirm any reporting. Look, we knew not, the flight. Not reporting. The DNI said today that the U.S. does not appear to have provided critical new insights to the People's Republic of China. So is it they didn't provide any new critical insights or they didn't get anything? I would refer you to the ODNI if you have specific questions on their reporting. What I can tell you from here and what we have said many times is that we knew the flight path of the balloon before it crossed the United States. We took precautions in advance to ensure that it didn't get sensitive information. And when it, when it, when it comes to technology like this balloon, it has limited additive value 
compared to other means of intelligent collection. And we have said that. And the, and the bottom line is this is the, the administration that identified the problem and took action. Thanks, Green. How is the White House preparing for the medication abortion rulings, and who's involved in leading those efforts? So, um, again, going to be very careful as that is uh, uh, as we're still waiting for uh, the ruling to to come forth. Uh, we have been talking internally uh, how we would move forward if that were this unprecedented action uh, was taken, and so just don't have anything more to share on that. Uh, but again, uh, this is something if it were to happen would be unprecedented. Uh, I don't want to get into specifics uh, around ongoing litiga litigation. I'll say this, that uh, this is about the FDA's authority uh, to make its independent evidence-based decision on drugs, decision on what medication can be used in our country, should not be determined in a court. Uh, they should be determined based on their safety science and the data. And so the bottom line, when you think about uh, 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 mifeprestone, this is something that's been, this is a drug that's been around for two decades. Uh, this is a drug that is that is uh, used in 60 other countries. Uh, again, this is something that is an FDA authority. And so so not going to uh, get involved. I'm not going to go into uh, into uh, more deeply about uh, this specific case. But yes, it would be unprecedented. But is the White House concerned that you could have two different federal courts with two different rulings, and that this could then wind up before the Supreme Court, which last some or returned abortion rights? So look, we're going to prepare for uh, all the different range of scenarios. That's what I can promise the American people. That's what I can say uh, uh, here to ensure that the access to this drug uh, for women, uh, that women have this access to, uh, to this drug. So we're, again, we're going to prepare for for the different scenarios. I'm just not going to get ahead of that. Thanks, Green. If I could follow up just on the coordination, uh, aside from the readout that the president had with the king, can you just explain why it's not the president himself going to represent the U.S. and the first lady instead? Look. The president um, is looking forward. He had a great conversation, has a good relationship with uh, King Charles III, uh, and uh, they've, they, uh, as you know, they've met before. And uh, there's a lot of shared interests, shared values of uh, issues that they want to discuss, and they will continue to discuss. Uh, one of them being climate change, uh, and uh, and at some time in the future, uh, the king invited the president for a state visit. He accepted, and that will happen. Uh, just don't have anything further to share on that. Good. Thanks, Green. Are you concerned that the British people might see this as a snub that the president's not going? I know presidents haven't gone in the past, but now we have airplanes and much more modern technology that makes these kinds of trips easy to do. What does this say about the special relationship? No, they should not see it as a snub. Not at all. Again, the president has a good relationship with the king. They had a, uh, a friendly conversation, and I will leave it at that. It is not a snub. Go ahead. Yeah, last year uh, when the president was gave his democracy speech, uh, the networks all said they wouldn't air it because it was political. Some of the same networks last night aired a political speech uh, by the president's opponent. Is that something you now see as a precedent the next time uh, you want airtime? I'm not going to speak to that. Go ahead. Uh, thank you. Um, former Vice President Pence said that if the shooter who killed six people uh, in that Christian school in Tennessee was motiva motivated by a hatred towards Christians, that the crime should be categorized as a hate crime. I'm wondering what the president thinks of that kind of designation. It's not for us to decide. And then today, Indiana just uh, banned puberty blockers, hormone therapies, and gender transition surgeries for minors. I'm wondering what the president's reaction is to the Indiana governor signing that bill into law. And does the president have a position on at what age these kinds of therapies and surgeries are appropriate. That's something for uh, a child and, and their parents to decide. It's not something that we believe uh, should be decided by uh, by legislators. Uh, so I'll leave it there. Um, but um, well, you know, in the past couple of months, we have seen uh, a record number of LGBTQI bills, anti-LGBTQI. Uh, bills, more than 600 of them have been filed in state houses, uh, and a significant number of them have been anti-trans uh, uh, bills, and, uh, you know, targeted at youth, and this is a president that has said that when these, uh, these are some of the bravest people, uh, he knows, and, but no one should have to be brave just to be themselves. And so this is a president that has 
com been committed to this community, that has been committed to our to our kids uh, in the trans community, to trans youth, and he's going to continue to fight for them. Uh, but uh, but again, I'm just uh, going to leave it there. Thank you. Okay. Two, 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 um, two questions on uh, legal matters, so I, I know you may not be able to speak to them too much. Uh, first, uh, the Attorney General of Texas is uh, apparently going to court trying to block implementation of the omnibus on the grounds that there wasn't a quorum present of the members of the House of Representatives uh, in person when that was passed. Uh, does the administration yet have a view on, on the legality of the, the omnibus and, and what uh, the uh, Texas Attorney General is uh, yeah. suggesting? I'm just not going to comment to that. And what's their second question? And the second one is uh, there was a ruling about uh, preventative services in the Affordable Care Act and the, the and what is the message to insurers and providers uh, with that ruling having been made and, and obviously appeals coming but but right now what's the message to providers and to insurance companies about the the court blocking that the uh, Texas ACA the Texas, yeah. So look, the president is glad to see that DOJ is appealing this decision, uh, which blocks a key provision of the Affordable Care Act uh, that has ensured free access to preventive health care for 150 million Americans. Uh, this case is, case is an yet another attack on the Affordable uh, Care Act, which has been around, as you know, for 13 years and, uh, and uh, survived, has survived three challenges uh, before the Supreme Court. Uh, the administration is going to continue to improve, uh, to fight to improve health care, as we have seen him do the the last two years and make it more affordable for hardworking and uh, working families. That is something that the president has been committed to. And uh, and so we're going to continue to do that, especially as it faces attacks uh, by special interests. Ms. Corrine, on Florida, uh, Governor Ron DeSantis signing uh, a concealed, uh, permitless concealed weapon law. I know you released a statement, but does the White House feel that when laws like this are passed in states like Florida, that it undermines the work it's doing to address the, uh, the nation's uh, gun epidemic? So we think it's shameful. It's certainly shameful and tragic, especially after a school shooting. That's what, that's what the Florida governor decided to do. Uh, and uh, again, we spoke, we spoke about this uh, last week. Uh, and uh, if you think about this bill, this law, it uh, eliminates the need to get a license to carry a concealed weapon. This is what was signed after we heard uh, what occurred in Nashville, Tennessee, after we heard three kids and three, uh, three administrators uh, were, you know, were murdered. And so look, what we think, it's the opposite of common, uh, common sense gun safety, which we know majority of Americans want to see. This is not what they want to see. Uh, they want to wait to see a way, uh, in a common sense way, on how we're going to protect our communities, how we're going to protect our kids, and how we're going to protect Americans. And so, uh, you know, too many lives have been ripped apart. Uh, too many lives have been taken. And the president is going to continue to call on Congress uh, to move forward with the uh, assault weapons ban. Uh, he's going to be very clear about that. The high capacity magazines require safe storage of firearms, eliminate gun manufacturers' immunity from liability, and require background checks for all gun sales and for state officials to take action on the state level as well. But it is incredibly uh, shameful to see what was done in Florida. Uh, and, uh, and again, it's just unfortunate after a tragic event. Thank you. Uh, I have two China-related questions. First, the uh, Chinese embassy in the US sent a threatening letter to Speaker McCarthy and congressional members of both parties warning them do not meet with the Taiwanese president. What is the White House response to China's intimidation to the U.S. politicians on the U.S. soil? Uh, what are you going to do about it? And the second one is that, uh, how does the administration see Beijing tomorrow hosting Iran and Saudi Arabia foreign ministers in their path towards uh, normalization? Look, I've spoken to your first question before, uh, just moments ago. I spoke to it yesterday. I just spoke to it moments ago. And I also uh, also highlighted what uh, Secretary Blinken said today uh, in Belgium. And again, we've been very clear. There's no reason uh, for Beijing uh, to use this transit 
uh, that has been done many times before. This particular uh, president of Taiwan has done it uh, six times before. It is an unofficial visit. It is a private uh, visit, and it should not be used uh, to uh, for any kind of uh, escalation or overreaction. And we've been very clear about that. I talked about how we've had conversations, open line of wanting to keep those open line of communications uh, with Beijing, and we've had direct conversations uh, about this. And uh, and and lastly, I'll just say Congress is a separate and co-equal branch of, of government, and uh, you know, and so any specifics about that particular meeting, I would certainly refer you uh, to this to, to the speaker's office. Go ahead. Okay. My second question. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. My second. Uh, is, is the Biden administration considering declaring access to abortion a public health emergency? And if so, what might that look like? I, I don't have anything to share on on that piece. I know I've been asked. We've been asked many times about that. I just don't have anything to share additionally. Okay. All right. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow, guys. Have a good day. Thanks.